Welcome to Frequently Speaking. This is your host, Max Wellness. Now here on this podcast, we're going to start to break down words that we speak outwardly and how their vibrations create what we frequently see. Now in today's episode, we're going to delve into AM to DM. Welcome, welcome, y'all. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Frequently Speaking. Today, we are going to talk about active masculinity and divine masculinity. Now, this is kind of like waking up from the a.m. to the p.m. But what happens when these guys are like, we just waking up and sliding in the d.m.? So there's this there's this new, you know, concept of <clears throat> how active a man should be. But what really is activity? And um, this is something that, you know, I speak about with a lot of my male friends. Um, I speak in, I've spoken to about two to clients um, and just people passing. There's this new day and age and in this health and wellness renaissance that's beginning to happen in areas. There's a lot of concept of who and how a man should be. And also we're rewriting this narrative of this patriarchy that has been pushed and all these conditions that have been, you know, forming and shaping and shifting our lives as men. And this whole concept of actively doing and rather than having this divine masculinity of divinely doing. So I want to I want to bring this value into this of defining what the difference is between an active man and in comparison to a man that's being active. And we're going to see where the distinction of one is of intention and how one can be of evolution. So <clears throat> this this concept, right, of active masculinity. When I when I speak the word active, what do you automatically think of? You know, maybe somebody running, maybe somebody exercising, maybe somebody like hammering something into the ground. Um, you, you get this sense of what active really means. But what is the active masculine? These days, as, as soon as some guys wake up in the AM, right, it's, it's all about checking to see who's in their DMs. Now, as men, we're brought up in this world of patriarchy, and ba- it's based in action. Day to day, it's do this, be that, strive for this, create, build, compete, and conquer, whether it be from ourself or from the external world. When we have, let's, let me ask you this. When have we ever questioned the nature of this action, the true nature of our creation? What does it mean to actively create through your masculine nature? We have to have a baseline for what that nature is before we begin to explore and actively create what we are as men through our daily life from a.m. to p.m. Now, I know this one seems very masculinely driven and really directed towards the guys. And guys, I really want you to um, take this in. And there's going to be a practice at the end of this. And it is a cognitive practice that that leads you to some really inquiring and penetrating questions that are going to help to to not only just open up your perspective, but also hopefully shift your paradigm and bring you into a deeper sense of spiritual understanding and also just a little bit more clarity of actually where these things are coming from. But also, ladies, I would love for you to, to get this, this insight into what an active man is because also... I'm not just speaking about the the physical representation of men that are out here in the world. What we're really talking about is this transformation and expression of masculine energy. So when I hear a lot of women speak about, you know, men and masculine energy, it's like, yeah, I need to do and I need to act and I need to, you know, plan and be, you know, it's like the logical thing. And it's like, who told you that that is the masculine energy, you know? And it, it comes from all these like, you know, societal constructs and all these different things. But this is what I hope to break down and bring a little bit more insight into this shift and this rhythm that has really been set into place. And really ask yourself if you're riding that ripple and you're riding that wave or are you creating your own wave of masculine tendency? So 
taken what we know and have seen over the last 4,000 years of patriarchal rule, we see how masculinity has driven the world into a direction of hyper-tendency. With that, there shows an illusion of imbalance within many different dynamics, causing imbalance within social, economic, health, education, and so on. The agenda has been rooted in what masculinity means as a poster board rather than a self-explorative expression of natural truth. In this, where do we find the balance between nature of masculinity and our enacted intent of its expression? We can start by looking at the space in between intent and nature. So after all of these years, we have this superficial concept and this construct of what masculinity is, and it's been deep in, deeply rooted in this agenda to really exploit the, the activeness and the doing and the pulling into the future. But is that true masculinity? Um, is that divine masculine's nature? Or is that just an intent that was set a long time ago, which is a ripple that has just continued throughout this 4,000 years to be carried on? So I want to uh, get a little mystical here and, and bring you into your, into your mental and your imagination. So imagine this. You're told to do something one day, and you're told to do it one way, and you tell someone to do it that way as well. They then tell someone else, and so on, and so on, without any question. Would you call that evolution of performance, or just a revolution of action? As we rise as men, we see an active man, doing and doing all day until the sun sets, and then repeating the next day. Yes, Repetition creates rhythm, and rhythm creates resonance, and resonance is what creates results. I get that. The question is, when we follow that back through questioning, where is that repetition coming from? So, when we look at our cultures and our traditions, things like that, and this is something I bring into the men's work that I do um, in creating these different events and we're going to bring to summit and this is really the root and the pillar of this new project that we're creating so stay tuned for that but this is about rites of passage and culture and tradition and these things that really set a tone so when we look at these things that we're telling our our kids or our brothers or our nephews or anyone that we're telling somebody something to do and how this is supposed to be done this way without any question. I really want to ask you that question. I'm just going to leave it there because I'm not, I don't want to bring any implicit bias into this, but is that truly evolution of our performance as humanity? Or is this just a revolution of action if it's not being questioned? And if something is not questioned, is that truly truth? So where is the result of your activity of masculinity born from this? Is it in your innate divine nature? Or is it a, social, a societal echo of a patriarchal intent? So if somebody way back when, 4,000 years ago, set this intention, set it strong enough and made the masses or enough people believe it and go with it, and that echoed on and echoed on and echoed on without any question, is that not a societal patriarchal intent so this questioning and self-insight can lead us to a truth that may very well be jarring uprooting and downright destructive to the paradigm of your masculine persona but this is what frequently speaking is all about but is it also it kind of worth peeking into when you think of your day what does it consist of repetition Whatever you repeat is up to you, though. Answering this question is about finding the core of it through discipline. And all discipline means is to learn. Practicing self-discipline is to learn self. How else do we do that than by questioning? Questioning from curiosity, though, rather than doubt or self-criticism. If you have a fear of finding out the answers... The following practice can provide some support in that, hopefully. <laughs> uh, 
Now, the results of these activities may be aligned with what you're repeating or else you'll feel unfulfilled. If you found yourself in this position, then asking this question, whether it's meditation or simply through the day, this can help to refine these results into a desired direction of your own. So these questions that are beginning to support, you know, whether what your repetition is, and you can also look at that as a pattern. But if a pattern doesn't have a direction that's, um, let's say, set by a discipline, then it's really just revolution. You're just moving in a circle. So this level of repetition is a little bit different. So the results of these activities may be aligned with what you're repeating or else you'll feel unfulfilled. If you found yourself in this position, then asking this question, whether it's meditation or simply through the day, this can help you to refine these results into a desired direction of your own. So taking into account that these different levels of repetition, and yes, I know that patterns are repetition and also habits are repetition and with repetition you know this happens but if our repetition doesn't have a direction this is where we can kind of become a little bit more convoluted and just be revolving in a circle and this is the true level of or let's say purpose i'm not gonna no let's let's not do that i'm not gonna say purpose of meditation but this is the utilization of meditation is to really set an actual direction and in that direction then we can allow our repetition to have a movement in it so because let's let's face it right are you actually evolving on your own <laughs> i mean most guys are on their streaming platform morning to night trying to gain more followers or following a bunch of ai generated females to get their quick dopamine fixes and running on running that on repeat blind leading the blind this is mainstream activity of masculinity. So here is where we start to see that, yeah, a, a man can be very active, but is that actually evolution? Now, I'm here to tell you that no, you no longer have to be in that stream. That's not your innate divine nature. Most of us haven't had, well, some, some divine natures, but I'm not going to say that that is your divine nature. Most of us haven't had the opportunities to even tap into that divine nature or what that even means to us. Being a follower isn't what you intended to be as a man. Having followers behind a screen isn't what you intended to be as a man either. I know deep down you hear that call. That voice that says, what the fuck am I doing this for? Where is the valor in this? When really is the consistent ring of that societal echo in your room penetrated your skull saying this is the man that you are and that's all you have to do? Nobody is really truly believing that voice because that echo is the only thing that's coming in from society and the only thing that is overpowering that penetration again to your skull that resonation everything is a vibration everything is a frequency and if we don't fortify our mind and organize our thoughts then this is that same echo that same frequency that's being pumped out whether you want to be a conspiracy theorist or whatever and say it's coming from the wi-fi say it's coming from the bluetooth say it's coming from 5g towers whatever the hell it is it is a frequency and at the end of the day you are a transmitter and you are a receiver and by this tuning fork and this electromagnetism, and these, this, is, this is all science to help throw the conspiracy theories out the window, even though a lot of them support it. But this is not your intention as a man, period. It may be missed frequencies or, or cross wires or something like that. But to have this questioning, to really gain an understanding of really sitting back and observing and looking at what you are doing and seeing the results and seeing the effect of the calls that you are creating within your actions each day, this separates the intention from the nature that you are as a man. Now, evolution isn't easy. It's meant for the species that deeply desires it over dopamine. Sorry to break it to you. 
But if you're set in this identity of a man as the value you externally produce through activity, does that not keep you inherently at a finite level of purpose? Maybe your purpose is the external action. Maybe your purpose in the external action is deeper and set within the production of the effects. This is where we get the honor of devotional service as a man. So where is the service towards? Is it to the active intent or to the divine nature of truth? There's no way to determine that or fully accept it without questioning to the core where that repetition is resonating from and calibrating accordingly. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, if something is just continuously repeating through your head and it's not necessarily fulfilling you or you, it's not giving you that full truth or your full expansion of that, then how can it be coming from you? If your divine self and, let's say, God loves you so much or you have the belief that you are God, then that repetition that's coming out from you, where is that deeply rooted? Because if you were, when you were a baby and you came into this world the most innocent, the most pure, the most trusting, the most truth, the closestness that you had to divine nature, if that was, let's say, tweaked or calibrated to, to understand, to be conditioned, to just be active consistently, activity means this, then are you actively moving through your divinity or... Are you just simply revolving? I mean, this is this is not, you know, a complex question. It is pretty hard and it is pretty heavy. But there are some things that we can actually do about it. Like in this practice, right? We're gonna. It, it's gonna be a guidance through it. But you need to take some steps beforehand to actually kind of start to swallow this down and and dilute it and. Ladies, if you're listening to this, uh, hope and for the ladies listening to this, hopefully you can see and point out some of these, some of these cues and some of these actions, because this level of activity, when you find yourself just constantly, consistently doing, doing, doing in this direction, and sometimes that can actually take you away from your intuition. Like, yes, you are actually making moves, and yes, you are fulfilling this deep desire that you may have not yet reached, but from the morning to the night, is that truly leading towards your divinity? Are you being led by your divinity? Now, pausing the activity for a moment and stilling ourselves, lets us listen to what the inner divinity has to say about this. Firstly, have you connected to that innate divine voice of masculinity? How can we slow the action enough to truly listen to the silence of self that SOS within this silence is where we can find truth not the remnants of echoes past but of our actual nature of God endowed within us to be expressed into the world and before you start to think about the crumbling of all things you've come to know if you slow down that much think about that if you truly slowed down and everything crumbled, doesn't that show you the true integrity of the structure? Now, power, stability, strength, and integrity come from within the immov immovability of something set in place. No? Can we move gravity? What about the earth? Or the physical makeup of the planets? Simply put, without going into quantum mechanics, no. The divine nature of the expression of masculinity is, what I believe, sitting in the stillness and having the innate wisdom that you are all and commanding, shaping and molding things around you, can be done from the nature of your stillness. Of course, I mean the stillness of your internal self, but this is all that's expressed into the external masculinity as well. A man thinks of himself a king. But any story of a king, do you ever hear them controlling, commanding, and causing action from traveling across the lands themselves to enact their vision? No, they usually control everybody else doing that. 
So where does this physical action of masculinity come from? Why are we told, oh, run to the other side of the town, run over here, go get this money, chase this, chase that, go get this, go get that. That is actually the opposite persona of a king. The programming and conditioning of this activity shifts us from true divinity without questioning. Who sent you the DM? Who sent you that? <laughs> to tell you that this is the man that you are to be and this is how it's done. As men, there's a solidarity within our stance of cause and effect. But to transcend into evolution of masculine energy is about questioning the preceding truth and combining it with the truth of your innate nature for improvement. Evolution, not revolution. In this is the responsibility of the assuming of power, of identity, of our true nature as the divine rather than being guided into the finite confines of a masculine mind. When you accept the ability to respond to causing the things in your life and the world, you tap into your true innate power. With this responsibility applied through action, we come to realize the acceptance that we are causing effect. And in the message, we can be secure in the innate nature of intent without the activity of our masculinity. And this is the concept that I truly feel is the deep set roots in it. It's the security. Men provide and secure and you're a protector and provider and we we hold on to that title so much, but these are only two roles. And this deep set secure, if we cannot provide that, then this gives us insecurity. And it's that internal nature of not being able to secure something. So we consistently run out and do this and go out and protect and go out and do this and go out and do that. And these things without direction, I'm saying, I'm not saying innately that don't do anything and just sit on your couch and just, you know, imagine everything. No, what I'm saying, this activity without direction is the delusion of masculinity. Because really what's happening is that insecure men run out to go protect. Because you only have to protect things that you feel like can be taken from you. If you are in a state of being secure, when you've really been around a safe and secure man, you feel it. You feel the presence. You don't, you feel that level of danger and capability, but it's not threatening because there is a security and that man doesn't have to be active. That man can just place himself in a space and understand that he is causing all the effects around him. There's no showboating, there's no moving around, there's no extraness, there's no flex. The presence is the flex. So this is something that I've come to see and learn that in this spectrum of masculine intent and nature, the ability to balance between both comes with the exploration of both ends rather than falling in the frequency with the path of least resistance. In all of this, therein lies the true nature of two truths, and that they are both valid and true. This is wholeness. Where we come to truly understand, well, truly understand, firm in expressing divine nature, is in the fine-tuning of them both, which allows for expression of masculinity and its purity. And this is the activity of the divine masculine. Understanding that between these two poles, I can, I can begin to refine that by actively moving between the two. That I'm moving so quick that there is a stillness in the middle. It no longer becomes that balancing act of trying to balance one truth and then trying to balance the other truth. Trying to figure out this is the truth and that's the truth. It's settling into that true nature. So what does this look like for you? What is the true nature of the divinity that embodies your finite self? Have you questioned the resonance you follow and have been shaped by, by everything else around you? These resonances that, that come about, the, the concept of masculine energy, of, of a man, whatever it may be, 
of even activity have you questioned them because these are the things that are actively shaping your life every day so solely moving by intent can keep you active but to effectively evolve is an integration of your true nature with active intent ultimately when you rise in the a.m. as the man that you have been and express your actions into this world, you are ultimately feeding the resonance you have chosen to reflect as the sun that you are shining into the world. Is that of your nature or a DM of another man's intent? Hmm. So, this being said, this concludes the AM to DM, the active masculine to divine masculine. And... I want to finish off with this practice and if you if you would really like to delve into this and take this into application with this new expression or if even if this resonated a little bit with you um i just strongly encourage you to sit down take out a piece of paper take out a pen or a pencil and just write these questions and this is not something you have to do right away but this is something that you can take into your practice you can take into your life um or you can make it a little bit more active and really do like i do and just kind of go straight into it dive deep and these are going to be some uh some questions that really bring about the purity of your nature and how to follow those breadcrumbs down through to your actual true self and then you have to practice that listening so I want you to write out these questions and truthfully answer them with all of your purity. The first question is, what is the active masculine in you doing daily? This goes into however you may see yourself, whether it be in the physical, whether it be in your mind, whether it be in your spirit, whatever the active masculine in you is doing and i'm just going to leave it at that the second question is where is the result of your activity of masculinity born from the result is not what you create the result is where it has come from following that back because if you are the effect we need to find that cause and the cause is that result. The third question is, what kind of personality would your divine masculine have? Now, you can simply ask yourself this question. Also, feel into it if you want to get a little bit more somatic. If you want to, if you like to journal and that really helps you, really write out a specific personality that this divine masculinity truly provides. And then you can dive a little bit deeper from there <clears throat> question four is what does this look like in comparison to you take that list and that personality and hold it up to yourself you know where is that supporting you how is that encouraging you are those things actually expressed for you or to you how do the things next question excuse me how do the things you are doing today lead to this divine masculine? Are you actively placing and taking steps within your day that lead to this divine masculine presence or personality? And the last question I have for you guys in this practice is, have you questioned the resonance you follow and have been shaped by? And this really is going to bring you into a way of once you see this divine masculine and you start to give it an identity and you start to realize, okay, this is what it's in comparison and this is what the personality is and these are the things that I'm doing towards it once I rewrite that. Now you have to question that resonance of what you have been following and what has been shaping you so that you can start to unravel and unfurl and untangle yourself from that divine activity. So, after answering these questions, you should have a clear view of what you actively need to shift. Next, create a list 
of the active things that this man would be doing and begin to implement them into your daily practice one by one. Now, I'm not saying, you know, don't do them all at once, but this can start to give you a practical way of really looking at how your masculine energy is truly active. And if there's anything that I would like for you guys to take from this episode is to see the paradigm shift in activity, in masculinity, in evolution, in purpose, and all these different words so that we can start to bring our own comparison and our own level of balance between intention and nature. If you like this episode and would like to explore more perspectives like this with me as we get a bit more intimate and intricate look into our internal vibrations, be sure to tune in to next week's episode and subscribe for more. Until then, keep frequently speaking what you frequently see.